Yo, what is up everybody and welcome to a brand new video. Today we're going to be talking about the overnight 50 miler that I did a couple weeks ago and I completely freaking melted just like I did the first time I ran this. But we turned it around and we worked appropriately, we worked hard and we pushed hard. Now my name is Wayne Capasillo. I was in the 75th Range Regiment, got out. I work a full-time job, I have kids, I have a whole family, but I'm running high volume weeks and trying to hit as many ultra marathons as I can throughout the year. So a slow progression up and trying to build and build and build and trying to get faster and faster every year we do this thing. So I kind of switched up my training for this 50 miler and I was following a high volume marathon specific training plan from advanced marathoning if you're ever looking for a marathon book or a running book in general that has a lot of good information that got me probably fitter than i've ever been so i would highly highly recommend advanced marathoning but i was going off of their template plans and then tweaking it where i needed it to in the back of that book where you're running basically 80 to 100 miles every single week and i did that for about three months straight leading into this 50 miler so my fitness was freaking huge my uh, I was a little bit faster than I usually am and I had a huge aerobic engine with all those hundred mile weeks under my belt so I came into this run really really freaking confident and I was looking to burn this trail into pieces eh the second half hey I'm very proud of the second half but let's look into how this whole run went let's jump right into the clips let's go So we are just chilling in the back of the van, waiting for the 50 mile, the OSS CIA 50 miler to get started. And uh, I got here like two and a half hours before and just chilling out, got everything checked in, dropped off my drop bag. I only have one on course drop bag that's like kind of centrally located because this is a two loop course. So I can come to, back to the van for some aid station relief and then I'll have that one around like 10 to 13 miles uh, on the course. There's also non-access aid stations that have, there's like about eight of them uh, throughout the course with these two included. So six other aid, aid stations where you can get limited food and some water. So I'll be carrying a lot of my nutrition on me. I'll have little packets of the little cocaine packets of Tailwind on me that I can throw into the water if there is just water at the aid station. Uh, so I'll have like four to five bags. I always carry a little bit more than I need just in case like something happens with aid stations or I'm moving a lot slower than expected. Uh, so I usually carry like an hour or two hours worth of nutrition more than I usually need. So this is how I have the little aid station set up. Uh, right now I'm chilling on like an inflatable bed. Uh, I have a blanket and a pillow that I'll be using if I'm actually going to stay here after the race and wait for like the ceremonies. I have all my aid station stuff here. So in here I have some balls of rice. Uh, I ha I'm using these beta gels, these SIS beta gels, 40 grams of carbs each, which are freaking awesome. And then I have a bunch of the... <clears throat> I have a bunch of the Tailwind bags right here. So each bag has 200 calories of Tailwind in them. I'll be carrying around four to five of those in my bag. Some pollen control, allergy control, some lube, and then I have some baby wipes also in case I need to plus up on those if anything happens. Uh, I got some water bottles here. Most of these will be going in my pack and then extra clothes in the back. So I have long sleeve and some weatherproof jackets if it starts getting cold at night it's supposed to be like 60 degrees at night so i'm not really too worried about it hopefully i can stay in the tank top the whole time if not just put on like a long sleeve i'll also have extra shoes if i need them uh a ferro gun to loosen anything up if anything happens and then i have my cooler with a battery pack an external battery pack that i have my cell phone charging and my 
my watch charging right now. Inside the cooler, I don't have much. I usually have a lot more, uh, but since it's just a 50 miler and I wanted to really rely on the aid stations on this one, I just have a couple Red Bulls and some water in there. Usually I'll have some like fruit and some other like sushi and stuff. But with the rice that I have, I should just be able to dump them or I should just be able to just stick with the rice. Um, I'm not gonna eat as much as I did as I did with grindstone, just because it seemed like there was a little bit too much in my stomach, but it will still be pretty good, like maybe in the middle of the run, if I start getting hungry, or if my stomach starts getting a little bit sour because of all the gels and all the carbs and stuff like that. So I bought this little thermos at TJ Maxx for like 10 bucks, and then I just have some hot rice in there. So it's just like, a cup of rice which is gonna be I think it's like 230 calories and like 50 grams of carbs or something like that I'll have to look it up I'll put it on the screen backwards but or I'll put it on the screen when I'm in editing but a cup of rice has always helped me out quite a lot when my stomach starts getting sour or if I start getting a lot of acid buildup just because of all the all the freaking sugar and stuff coming in there I also have some goodies, of course, just in case my stomach doesn't want to take in the gels. Uh, so I have alternate fueling sources that I have in the van and then we should be good to go. I mean, hopefully I can do these aid station transitions really quickly and get in and out like with no problem. I want to really try to push this run and not spend a lot of time in aid stations, just kind of, just kind of an all out effort a steady effort and try to get out here with I'm trying to go for sub 10 10 hour and that's around like a nine nine minute mile pace which is doable I've done it in training up to like a 50k but we'll see how the conditions are out there a little bit more elevation gain than my training courses but I've been have I have been training on this course and it seems doable as long as the body keeps up gotta stay with the nutrition plan even as as it gets cold and as it gets dark because this is a nighttime a nighttime 50 miler um so i have a headlamp that is in my pack already ready to go and then i have a headlamp in my drop bag just in case that one runs out of batteries so i'll have two headlamps on course and then i'll be able to charge my other headlamp if i if i really need it but i don't think i'll be out there that long the other headlamp that i have in my drop bag i have extra batteries so i'm just gonna chill out here i'll get everything all situated probably like 30 minutes before the race destroy a red bull pack everything up and then get ready to go all right let's go Three, two, one. All right, so 5.19 miles in at 53 minutes and 59 seconds. Uh, going a little bit slower than expected, 
my heart rate is like going way up. I think it's because of uh, the heat and the humidity, but, or the, and definitely the adrenaline of just starting a race. So taking it nice and easy and trying to get in as much nutrition in as possible when it's hot. Um, but overall feeling pretty good. Uh, sweating quite a bit to be expected. I got in about 600 milliliters of water so far and about 75 grams of carbs. So gonna start really pushing the, the carbs and the hydration at the top of the hour and then go on from there. So gonna keep it nice and slow, especially for this last first lap and then try to push it for the second lap. I mean, the pace will probably be slower on the second lap, but I'm gonna try to maintain the same effort level and really push through the little pain cave because in races before, once my legs start getting tired, I kind of slow down my overall pace. So I wanna try to push it, really focus on my heart rate and the actual effort at those higher ultra marathon level miles. So we'll see how it goes. All right, well, I'm gonna get off this phone and keep working my way down the trail. All right, so we are 10 mile, 10.8 miles in, two hours, 12 minutes, and fucking dying. I don't know what the fuck is going on, but my system, my body will not cool down. And, uh, I'm getting like heart palpitations and I'm throwing up. So, chilling out right now. I don't know what the fuck. I've done way harder efforts with 100 miles on my legs and it started sucking at like seven miles in. So, not sure 100% what the fuck is going on, but I'll monitor it, try to push in some fluids and uh, see what we can do. Fuck. Like when you look at those clips, my entire chest was just completely red. I was completely flush and my body was overheating. I've heat catted or I've had like pretty much like heat exhaustion in the military before to the point where I kind of passed out in the middle of a field and then woke up when we started going again, which is definitely, definitely not recommended. Uh, so I know how that feels, but I was really, really trending towards that heat exhaustion. I mean, my body didn't want to hold any fluids in because it was like rejecting everything because it was so hot. So I threw up like two big throw, <laughs> two big throw ups and then uh, like two other little small ones. Um, so I only really count like two big throw ups. Um, it was all pure water, just like the tailwind that I was trying to push into my body. So I had to make sure that I dealt with that before it got too bad. <laughs> Right at that, after that clip, I basically was just walking, walk and jog, walk and jog, walk and jog. When I got to the aid station, I tried to push in as much cold fluid as possible. And I just <clears throat> let my core cool down as much as freaking possible. I think that's so important to actually understand your body and understand those little signs. And I, I mean, everybody's not going to have that experience that I got in the military where I freaking actually heat catted. Um, and didn't tell anybody and then just kept going, which is stupid. But I know those indicators and I'll, now I know when I need to back off a lot. And I, I was kind of fighting myself for like a couple miles, probably from like mile seven to like mile 10, because that's exactly where I started dying the first time I ran it. Um, those issues were a lot of because I ate all you can eat Korean barbecue. And this time it was just a lot of the heat and the heat mitigation. So. I started feeling like that and I backed off a lot, started pushing in a lot of cold fluids. And then once the sun actually started going down, that's when I knew I could start pushing. So I kept it really easy, probably around like mile 12 and 13 was when it was the worst and I really had to slow down. I had like a 13 minute mile and a 15 minute mile where I really was just walking for like a whole mile just to cool the core temperature down and try to get back on track. After that, I slowly started to feel a lot better as the sun went down, as the heat went down, as I started was, as I start, 
as I was actually able to actually hold on to a lot more fluid and my body could actually utilize that fluid to cool my body down. And then when the sun went fully down, I was able to push my way to the halfway point where I could actually have access to my van and everything that I had in it. So I was still getting in a lot of nutrition. That's really important when you're taking a break or like actually having to back off and don't wallow in your own self pity and when you're walking or like you're trying to deal with something. Just remember that you're still out there, you're still putting in work, your body is still working to cool yourself down. Even though you're walking and you're not sweating as much, your body's still working really hard. So you still have to maintain your fluid intake and you have to maintain your calories. And that's gonna set you up for the the back half of the race. My nutrition plan for this whole race was drink two soft flats, 500 milliliters, so about a liter of water every hour. One of those bottles had 200 calories of Tailwind, about 50 grams of carbs, and then I would take a SIS beta gel, which has 40 grams of carbs in it. So I was getting around 90 to 110. There was a, there was a couple cases where I would eat from the aid station or take a little bit more tailwind and I would pump in like 20 to 30 more extra carbs. So I would be floating around 110 to 120 grams of carbs every hour. So that was the nutrition plan. Uh, a lot of, a lot of hydration cause it was so hot and then a lot of carbs because I weigh about 185 pounds and I burn really quickly. I have a really high metabolism, so I can push in a lot of carbs in my system every hour. That's something that I've been training a lot in training, where I've been consistently trying to pump in around 90 to 110 grams of carbs on my long runs and a lot of the key workouts during this training plan. Also, as you could tell from that last clip, I dropped my kit. So I had the Solomon Agile 5, and that thing was just constricting my upper body, and it wasn't allowing me to actually expel all the heat that was coming on. So when I got to my drop bag aid station, cause around like mile 10, you can have one drop bag on course and man, I just dropped everything that wasn't necessary and I stuffed everything in my naked belt and my John G shorts. And I'm really going to start focusing on trying to be as slim or as light as possible in future races because it always seems like I actually end up dropping everything and just using that naked belt and using the John G shorts because there are so many pockets on that and how my loadout is, I can definitely carry everything that I need just in those two things. And man, I stripped that freaking thing off. It was completely soaking wet. I had to strip off my OG pumpkin freaking tank top to try to expel as much heat as possible. And that's how I stayed the rest of the race. It was just a naked belt, John G shorts, and shirtless. And <laughs> for the whole race, I was completely fine. I never got cold during the night. Even at the middle of the night around 1 a.m., it was still like 65 degrees with 40 or 50% humidity. So it was still pretty hot out considering. And I just stayed shirtless for the rest of the race. And man, if you can drop, if you're overheating and you can drop some of your gear and especially in your upper body on your back, I sweat a lot on my back. If I can get that off of my body, it helps freaking regulate my heat so much. The one thing that I wish I did, and I'm definitely going to reconsider bringing on all these hot races is an ice bandana. I don't know why I didn't do it. <laughs> I did it for Vermont 100 and I did it for Vermont 100 and the Yeti 100. And that's exactly why I also pump in a liter to a liter and a half of fluid every hour on ultra marathons because I freaking sweat so much. My, my sweat rate is so high that I really have to focus on that heat mitigation and that hydration and electrolytes. And I have to carry a lot of water. I have to drink a lot of water. And then I have to do as much as possible with the ice bandana or the lighter kit to try to help my body just cool off a little bit because I run hot. I run hot, baby. All right, so we are 24 miles in, five hours and five minutes. Total ascent, 2,580. Second wind has officially come, so feeling a lot better. Uh, whatever was going on during the daylight uh, passed. So restocked, relubed, and I'm gonna get back out there. So I'm gonna actually try to make it a split, maybe? Probably not, but hey, I'm gonna push it this time. Or, pfft, keep saying that but I'm gonna work appropriately so 
going to get back out there and uh, see what we can do. After this halfway point, it was completely dark, so filming was pretty much impossible. Um, and then my microphones were freaking shitty. I, I have to figure out how to use this Insta360 X4 with a little bit better uh, video quality or audio quality because it just sounds like and it freaking sucks. So I didn't film anything on the second half, but this is when I was actually feeling a lot better and the sun went down, the heat went down a little bit and I was actually able to use the high volume and the speed training that I was doing for the three months leading up to this race. And Man, I was in such a freaking poopy mood for the first half of this 50 miler. I was like almost about to quit in the first 10 miles of this race. I was like, why did I run all these freaking 100 mile weeks and pushed it so hard to just melt my freaking face off and struggle and not be able to actually push how I wanted to push? I went on that trail and did 26 miles. I did 20 miles, 24 miles, and 26 miles on that course at a much faster pace while I was running 100-mile weeks or 80, mi 80 to 100-mile weeks. And I was just like, why did I train all this time? And I did all these training runs. And then when it comes down to it, I'm freaking dying. It, it, it's just like I got into this mental spiral. And it was really affecting my mood. It was really affecting my pace and it was really affecting my race. And I was like about to pull the plug around, <laughs> around mile 10 and probably around mile 13 or 14, I just kind of said to myself, like, Hey, we're out here. We get to do this. We chose to do this. So let's just fucking do this. Let's fucking do the mission that we planned on doing the entire time we were training. These freaking 100 mile weeks, the hours that I was running on the treadmill, the dark freaking nights on the trail with foxes just staring at me in the dark and their shiny little eyes just staring at me, freaking me the fuck out. All those miles in the dark, all the miles on the treadmill, waking up early, staying up late at night, everything that I freaking did for this race, let's utilize it now. So I would actually, I was actually forcing myself to smile, uh, like a fake smile and the fake smile actually freaking helped. So I was running and then every time I started get, go, getting, uh, every time I started getting like a little poopy, I would go, <laughs> and it would make me laugh because I'm like a fucking idiot in the middle of the night, in the middle of the woods in Virginia, just going, just like fake, la uh, fake smiling to myself. And Hey, it, it, it worked, man. I was able to like turn my, get myself out of that negative like thought cycle. And it put me into a cycle of let's work and let's have fun. I ran the second half faster than I did the first half. And it's just because of that mental change and move my way up the field and start catching a lot of people that were passing me in the first half of the race. I actually, I think I was like, I think I got down to like 30th place or something. I don't even freaking know. But I ended up working my way to the top 10. And, and I stayed in that top 10 after the 50K mark. Or I think it was around like 35 miles where I started working my way back to that top 10 position. Another thing that happened was there's one out and back that I missed on the first loop. So on my second loop, I actually had to run it twice. I actually saw like the top Five, I think I saw third and fourth place and I was running next to them and they're like, whoa, where did you come from? And I was like, hey, don't worry about it. Don't worry about me. I have to do this out and back twice because I missed it on the first loop and they're like, oh, okay. <laughs> so um, I started running and I hit that out and back. It was just like a really steep dirt road. So it's, it wasn't too bad. And then I turned around and I saw everybody again and then I worked my way back. So I made sure that I actually ran the course appropriately and didn't skip out on any portion of it. And I ran that out and back twice. Um, so I was running next to like fourth place or fifth place and then doing the out and back again dropped me down to I think like eighth or ninth. And um, when I started picking up speed at the very last miles, like with around like seven to five miles left, I was able to pick off a couple more people um, 
on those last couple miles on the very very last mile i saw this dude with a headlamp and he was kind of moving slow and he saw me in the light and he just took off and i was trying to chase him down but that guy freaking took off which is awesome it's like fun competition i'm glad that i was able to give somebody some motivation because they saw my light in the distance um but hey he motivated me too in that last mile i was really pushing up the last uphill and trying to get this race done i ended up in seventh place overall with a chip time of 10 hours 39 minutes and 14 seconds it wasn't the goal that i was looking for i wanted to try to hit a sub 10 hour 50 miler but hey that first 10 miles and the hole that I was in and the mental space that I was in, I call this one a freaking win. If I was able to actually negative split this race with the training that I did, it really shined a light on how to train in the future and what I need to really work on. And what I really need to work on and what this has really illuminated for me is one, heat mitigation in the very beginning, in the first freaking miles, because it will affect your race overall, no matter what, no matter where you overheat. If you overheat, it's going to affect your freaking race. So I'm trying not to get to that point in future races anymore. Number two is high volume helps you in those later miles. Like when I was running only 50 miles on average, and then I would peak around 80 miles at like 50 miles and 60 miles, around 40 miles, my legs would just start getting trashed and I would have to slow down a lot. But that's when I was really starting to pick up during this race. And I was hitting like 10 minute miles with some elevation gain, which is fast for me, on the trails uh, around mile 45. And my legs felt great. And even up to that last mile, my legs were still feeling strong. Like I still had a lot of energy to actually start pushing. And I really want to see how this higher volume with workouts in it will really affect my hundred mile of time because it puts me in a, it puts me in a place where I feel a lot more comfortable pushing my legs when they're tired. When I'm doing like a Thursday workout when I'm doing a Thursday workout or a Friday workout where I already have like 50 or 60 miles under my legs and then I'm pushing into zone three, like top level zone three, my heart rate's at like freaking 170, my legs are tired, I got some weight lifting done and I'm really pushing it in (laughs) and I'm really pushing that pace and pushing my legs. It really helps in those lower miles when you're in zone two and you're kind of just like your body hurts. Everything feels bad. It feels like you're in zone three, but really you're like heart rates at like 125 or 130. So it kind of allows your body and allows your mind to dig into those and dig into that little pain cave a little bit more because you're, you're, you're doing a lot more in training when you're doing those workouts and running at that higher volume. If that makes, if that makes any sense, that's, that's kind of how I see it. It's kind of like the more you touch fire in training, the more you can actually become fire resistant during your race. So I'm very, very freaking proud about how I was able to push on that second half, how my legs felt, and honestly, how freaking fast I was able to recover after this race. After the race, you know, I charged to the finish. I got there before sunrise, so that was uh, that was awesome to actually get there before sunrise. The first time I ran it, that was my goal. And then after the race, after the race, I was just kind of hanging out and talking to a couple local runners that are in the area that I met online and during this race. So if you said what's up during the race, hi, nice to meet you. But it's always nice to talk to anybody that actually watched my YouTube videos or got anything from these race breakdowns. And also, I'd like to thank the race director and all the volunteers out there. You guys really helped me out, like pump my mood up and help me out with my water out there when I was freaking dying. So thank you very much for all the, so thank you very much for all the support. But man, this race it shined a light on high volume and very specific training. So I'm going to stay on the speed train and I'm going to go for my first road marathon. And I haven't ran a sanctioned marathon ever in my freaking life. So the goal is, (laughs) and I always make lofty goals. The goal is a sub three hour marathon. I'm going to be trying or attempting it at the Marine Marathon, October 27th 
in Washington, D.C. So that's the next adventure. I learned a lot. I have a huge aerobic base because of this 50 miler, and I'm rolling that right into a marathon specific prep for a sub three hour marathon. So let's see how that's going to work. A lot more speed training, a lot more workout specific, flat specific training. And we're going to be running in the heat because it is the dead of summer. So I took two weeks basically off. I was staying with active recovery, just making sure everything's fully reset. I wanted to become hungry to work out again, let my like freaking brain reset and be ready to attack the next training block for the first sub three hour marathon. So let's see if these crunchy freaking veteran legs can actually achieve that in this coming fall. But I'm starting to ramble, starting to get excited about the prospects of this season. If something doesn't excite you, hey, go and find something that excites you. Life should life is so full of stress and jobs and fucking traffic and people being assholes. If you're doing a hobby and it doesn't excite you, fucking find something that excites you. If you're not afraid of it a little bit, like I'm terrified to run a road marathon in a, at a fast pace because I've always just kind of been kind of more of a slow runner that just never stops. So running fast is completely foreign to me <laughs> and it freaking scares the shit out of me. Like I've always been a shitty runner in elementary school. I didn't even finish the mile. I never ran track and field. I was never on a high school team. I was never on a college team. I was in the range regiment and the thing that I was actually good at was like CrossFit and lifting weights and just never quitting. But like running and running speed was always my <laughs> It was always my worst event. So that's why running has always been so interesting to me because I freaking suck at it and I can continually upgrade and get better and better and better. And I'm always in fear of freaking running. And that's, that's what we always say. Chip away, become an average savage, run towards fear because in that fear, that is when you learn about yourself and that is when you get better, that is when you advance. Every aspect of your life is when you're in freaking fear. So get out there, chip away, become an average savage. Let's go. Let's get it. Let's go. Ah!